floss tube. It's Jen from Jen Stitching Niche. I'm back for an update video. It's been about two months since my last video, so I have quite a bit to share with you. I've been doing stitching, lots of cross stitching every single day, and then I've done a couple of other new crafts that I want to share with you. Um, we ended the semester uh, the week after Thanksgiving, so they had final exams um, that Monday through Wednesday after Thanksgiving, and we were all so happy for it to end. I had some really good students this semester. I know I just watched Misty Purcell's video and she was talking about the same thing. Um, I spent a lot of time kind of acting more as a, you know, kind of a coach for these students because they were very independent on their learning, though that I do provide all the materials as closely as I can to what it would be in a regular classroom, but still the students, you know, they needed a little bit of encouragement. Because one of the things that can happen when you do an online class as an instructor is you can overload the class because you're like, oh, I can add this and this is really neat. I can do that. And we're all sharing ideas that we have. And some people are like, oh, I'll do that too. So some of these students became overwhelmed with the amount of work that they had to do. So I was very aware of that from the start and tried to make sure, you know, my recorded lectures were not any longer than what they would have been in a normal classroom, um, that I'm not piling on extra activities and things like that, um, because it can become overwhelming. Uh, my students did very well considering the situation. Um, you know, not all of them would agree with me, but as an overall class, considering the situation, they did really well. So very impressed with my students this semester. Of course, we have some that are, you know, there's always those few. And I actually kept up with the number that were problem students and it was less than like 4% of the class. And that was kind of made me realize that 96% of my students were doing what they were supposed to do. The other four are the ones that caused so much frustration. So um, I've only had Zoom meetings after that with a few students, mainly just wanting to look at their exams and get clarification on things. No one's challenged their grade yet, so that's always good. Um, I've had Zoom meetings almost every day since then, though, because even though the semester's over, the faculty still have things to do. I'll work through Christmas on getting ready for my next classes, but that's okay. I'm enjoying working from home. I absolutely love working from home. Um, I will be teaching online classes in the spring. So I teach anatomy and physiology. Uh, so I'll teach the two sections of the anatomy and physiology course. And then I'm also our pre-professional advisor. So we have two pre-professional classes that we offer for our pre-professional students and I will be the instructor for both of those. Usually we only do them one, one semester in the fall and the other in the spring, but because of COVID, the fall one got pushed back to the spring. So that's a lot of information that you probably don't care about, but that's kind of where I am. Um, in addition to that, uh, we're in the process of revising our two semester textbook so my co-authors and I have been Zooming and, you know, working together pretty consistently to get through our chapters. I've got about seven chapters left to do, but I'm really excited. We're doing a lot of um, really great upgrades to the textbook, so the next edition should be fabulous. So, so that's what I've been doing all day, every day. But I, I stop at five o'clock every day. That's my thing. I'm, I told my co-authors, I don't care. At five o'clock, it's quitting time. And I go and do whatever I want to do. So that's been um, helpful. And I've been crafting quite a bit. So I've got lots to share. Um, I guess I will start with some of my finishes. So I am going to do a finish parade, not an FFO, because I haven't done that. I haven't FFO'd hardly anything this year, but I have finished a lot of projects, cross-stitch projects this year, and I keep a record of it because I'm, you know, I'm a, well, a lot of us are. We love our planners and things. So at this point, with yesterday's finish, I have 71 finishes for this year. Woo! -hoo! That is amazing. I'm so proud of myself. Um, so th some of them are small, some of them aren't so small. So I'm going to do a finish parade, a separate video showing you those finishes starting from the first of the year all the way till the end. I may get one more finish this year, maybe two. So that would put me at 73 finishes for, for the year, but we'll see. We will see. Um, 
Let's see, what else do I have? Oh, I do want to show one thing. I got the best card ever. A lot of us have I've received this wonderful card from Jenny, Long Dog Stitcher. She's so sweet. I was fortunate enough to meet her at the Huntsville retreat in January of 2020 before COVID. And she is just as amazing in person as she is in her video. She is hilarious, super sweet. Thank you, Jenny, I love the card. It's going up with the rest of our cards in our kitchen area where we display all our cards. Um, so let's do some finishes. So I have one finish hot off the presses from yesterday. Many of you are doing this. This is the Marion Minty Sal from Brenda Gervais. It's a freebie offered through her uh, Facebook group and her Instagram. So I will try to remember to post links to both of those down below. But just if you go to Facebook, just look for With Thy Needle and Thread. It's her business account. So you can um, find the links for it there. She released it in four different parts. And um, each part, it wasn't like each part was separate. So like day one, there was a release. Day two had what the day one release had plus the new stuff. So by the end of it, they were all on one chart. So this is my finish. Isn't he adorable? I love this. My Christmas decor is primarily poinsettias, Santas, and peppermint sticks. So this was right up my alley. I am super happy with this. This was a fun, fun stitch. Now I did not use the call for threads. It was DMC and a few um, overdies, but what I've been doing this year and I'm trying to continue to do is to use um, some of these Victorian motto threads and the limited edition threads that you get from Gentle Arts. You know, they do these little bags with the limited edition, like 10 or, you know, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's 10 different colors. And they're so prettily packaged and they have such cute names. And so you buy them and then I don't know what to do with them. So I'm trying to use those up. So I used, and I'll tell you all of the threads I used instead of what Brenda called for. So, and I probably should use my glasses, sorry. I have new contacts. And when I have my contacts in, I can see far away, but I cannot see anything close up. It's horrible. I'm on Zoom calls with my glasses on, trying to read the screen. If I don't have my contacts on, I can see things close up, but I can't see things far away. It's tough getting old. Is it there? Okay. So instead of 3021, I use Gentle Arts Illinois Chocolate Zucchini Bread. So that was what I used for 3021. For the Oscar, I used this other limited edition, which I didn't write the name of, from um, Gentle Arts. And then I used Victorian Motto. So for the avocado, I used Victorian Motto Bayberry. For the 611, I used Victorian Motto Wild Sage. For the country, I mean, excuse me, Classic Color Works Licorice Red, I use Peggy's Primrose. For the 3777, I use Victoria Motto Antique Red Barn. For 3778, I use Victoria Motto Old Rose Pink. And for 3779, I use Georgia Peach Pie, Victoria Motto. For 712, I used Antique Carnation. And then for the white, I used shaded white. I'm doing another Brenda Gervais. I'll show you that in just a few minutes. And I'm using another Victorian motto for that. Okay, so that was my, fin my finish that just happened, like last night. I even did the French knots. Let me see if I can get that close enough. And they're so cute. I just love this. So thank you, Brenda. That was extremely nice. That is a great chart. Loved it. So, all right, let me see. Let me pull this over here so I can show you my other finishes that I've had since the end of September. I did have all this organized because I was going to do this last night. Then I didn't. Okay, so I think my last video was um, on like early October. So I'm going to start with my October finishes. If I can find them, what did I do? Oh, I'm organized. I've got everything exactly where I know it should be. 
Okay, so on on October 11th, which is my mother's birthday, I finished the Salem Mass. This was in one of the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitching magazines. I think it was in the last year's. Yeah, it was last year's autumn. And I stitched this on Ancient from Picture This Plus. This is 16 count Ada. Because when I first saw it, I'm like, that would look perfect on Ada. And I actually coffee dyed, over dyed this as well to give it a little bit more of a darker color. But I think she's really cute. I don't know how I'm going to finish that. Okay, then on October 16th, I finished the Bounty Sampler from Plum Street, which I love this chart. I think this tree is one of the best things that I've ever cross-stitched. It's so pretty. And I love these little scarecrows. It's a take on an Adam and Eve sampler. I just love this one. So I have the frame, I just have to pin it. But isn't that gonna be adorable? I should have had this done for Thanksgiving, but I didn't. So, super cute. So while I'm looking at this, because this is one thing, people ask me all the time, how do you get so many things stitched? I'm a planner, and I'm a make a plan, execute the plan kind of person. And what I do is I look at a chart and I'm like, I want to finish this chart by, you know, this date. So I have this many days to stitch. And then I identify different regions. I break it up into sections and say, okay, I want to have her done on one day. I want to have this done on another day. And so I assign myself, and I get in trouble if I don't meet my assignments. I assign myself specific tasks to do so I can meet those goals. It's a little crazy when I describe it, but that's how I get things done. Okay, Alicia, if you're listening, you're probably laughing at me, so. All right, then on the, what is that, the 24th, I finished the October mini sampler. So I am doing a sal on these mini samplers, and I probably should have started them the month before than what they are, but what I'm doing is the day of that month number, like October 10th, I start the, the sampler. So yesterday was December 12th, so I started the, Dece the December mini sampler. I'm stitching these all on 40 count, and I'm going to display them all each month. And I'll talk about this display in just a second because I've been thinking, and I've got an idea, and I need feedback on that as well. Okay, so that was my next finish. Then I finished one of the parts of the Scary Apothecary, but I didn't bring it down here. So, sorry. I'll show it in my other video. And then another one I finished that I've been working on forever. Let's see. Is Three Black Eyed Susans from With Thy Needle and Thread or Brenda Gervais. I love her. I love pumpkin head people. I collect them. I display them in my craft room all the time, but I really enjoyed stitching this one. What stopped me when I got kind of bogged down was that cauldron. But isn't that pretty? And I think this is stitched on a 32 count. It's probably cocoa. That's what it looks like from with the um, Weeks Dye Works. And then I used most of the call for threads, but a lot of it was Victorian motto. So like that purple was a Victorian motto that I bought years ago. One of my favorite colors of purple. Okay, so she's going to get framed, I think. Next up is Blackwater Hollow from Stacy Nash. I, this is the second time I've stitched this piece. I stitched it for Teresa one year when we did a sampler exchange for Christmas and loved it, so I restitched it for myself. It's so pretty. And this is on, um, I think this is a 36 count. I don't know. But it's, I stitched it with DMC, so I think it's so pretty. I did not do the Blackwater Hollow wording at the bottom. That's what's missing down here. So this will be framed and probably displayed in this room. This is our dining room, which normally, this is where my older son sets up. When he was in high school, well, college, because we moved in here 
after he graduated from high school, he did all of his work down here at this table and it was just always covered with stuff because he was a film major. So he was writing scripts and coming up with, you know, storyboards and everything. Plus he's a, we call him a doozer. If you watch Fraggle Rock, you know what that is. Um, he's always doing something. He's always building. He's always planning. He's always doing something. It's a lot like his mom. But he just keeps this room. It has always been his room. So when he went off to Disney, we cleaned it up. And it was so nice because we had a dining room table and I could put all my displays on it. Well, he's back now, right? Disney shut down the college program. So he's been back since March. And so it's his space again. He's got um, a bunch of stuff over there. I was just telling my husband, there's a little um, shelf over on the other, uh, opposite side that I always put all my stuff Santa's on every year. Well, it's got his printer and a bunch of his books right now. So I have to find someplace else to put my Santa's. But he's a lot neater now. You know, it's amazing what happens when you live on your own. He's much neater now than he was when he was in college. And you, you look over there, it's just his computer and everything's nicely organized instead of just piles and piles of garbage. So he's planning on moving out again, but I got him for a couple of months. He's starting graduate school. He's going to do a library science program that USM, the school where I teach, provides. It's all online. Um, and he's he talked to a, a, several of his advisors and they all agree that that would be a good master's program to do because he can then use that in film he could you know there's lots of things that librarians can do so he's starting that in the spring he's paying for it himself which was hilarious when he first got the bill he's like can you come look at this and i'm like yeah that's what it's going to cost he's like am I going to be able to do that? I'm like, yeah, you actually can pay for your whole program right now because he's a saver. He doesn't spend his money. You know, he, he, um, he's not cheap, but he just doesn't spend his money. When he left Disney, he had more money than when he started at Disney, which is really odd. So I was very proud of him. Plus he works. He's, he's, came to me last night. He's like, I'm thinking of going by Target on the way home from my other job and see if they need any overnight stockers. Do you think that's a good idea? I'm like, sure. He's a worker. Little doozer. So, um, I don't know. I got off topic. What was I telling you? Anyway, so what was I telling you? Three Black Eyed Susans, Blackwater Hollow. Oh, I was going to display that. <laughs> I was displaying this in this room so it will be framed and put up somewhere in here oh my goodness maybe i'm starved for a human interaction and then my last finish since i've seen you is the november um mini monthly sow so these are monthly what does she call them december so this is the november mini sampler this is from from the heart needle art by wendy and she has the whole 12 month series. They are adorable. We're doing a sal. It's the monthly mini sampler sal. Uh, you can post pictures on Instagram. There's several people that are working on them. They're really cute. Some of them are stitching them all together. So I was looking at it last night and someone finished these, I was finishing them as little pillows. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. But I'm thinking, I didn't give myself much space to do pillows, but we'll see. All right. So that is the finishes part. One other finish that is not cross stitching is punch needle. So I have been doing punch needle. This is from Teresa's Primitives, which I love her stuff. I picked up several of these at the um, Prim, Prim Society retreat a couple of years ago. They were in um, near Memphis, Tennessee. What was that? Holly Springs, I think, Mississippi. And I picked this up and I finally finished the punching. So that's what I've done. So the with this one, you I don't think I got the fabric. Maybe I got the fabric, but you had to draw it onto the fabric. And then the frame I used was the one suggested by Vana because I listened to Vana and I went and bought the frame because Vana says it's a great frame. Vana has a tutorial on punch needle. You should watch it. And so I had to add fabric so it could fit on the frame. So I finished that, isn't that pretty? And it goes on this little box which came with the kit. So I've got to you know, stain it, paint it, wax it, and then put the 
finish piece on it. So very cute, very much enjoyed that. Now let's talk about my current projects. So all year long, my goal has been to reduce my number of whips. I started the year with 81 whips. I wanted to get less than 50. I still wanted to participate in Stitch Mania because I love Stitch Mania. So I had to be very aware of what I was stitching. So my plan was to only stitch things that were 100 by 100 stitches or smaller. So that was my limit. And so for the most part, that's what I've done. I've, you know, stitched a lot of smalls this year, but I've also finished a lot of large projects, which again, in my finished parade that I'll do in a separate video, you'll see those. Um, one of the things I was also doing is I was, you know, very rigid as to what I was stitching. I, you know, I had a plan and I was going to make sure I stitched on all of those. And I did that from January all the way through the 1st of November. I was stitching on what I was assigned to stitch. And then towards Thanksgiving, I'm like, I'm done with this. So what I've been doing is just whatever I want to do. I have stitched every day. It may have only been 10 stitches, but I've stitched every day. So a couple of things that I've been working on. Um, one of the things that I had done is I picked out a bunch of Brenda Gervais Christmas patterns that I wanted to work on. And that's you know, I love Brenda Gervais. She's my absolute favorite designer. I could stitch everything that she designs. And um, so I picked out a bunch of her Christmas patterns and that's what I wanted to focus on. So recently I have been working on the Jolly Happy Soul. I first saw this stitched by Michelle, Farm Girl. Who I love everything she does too. If I'm a, I'm one of her Patreon members, and I have thoroughly enjoyed being a part of her Patreon. Her videos are hilarious. I watch her um, junk journaling videos, and she is just so funny, so adorable. Just the person, you know. You know, I'm like, oh, I wish I had lived next door to her. But anyway, getting off topic again. So, Frosty, and I have made some progress so that's my progress and it's hard to see but I've got like the first little section here of the snowman I am using called for if I have it if not I'm substituting um, some type of Victorian motto the other thing I've been doing is I have a bunch of wool applique, wool felt applique kits that I bought last year when we were in Amana for the Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat, Midwest Cross Stitch Retreat. And so I've been working on some of those. Um, I have one kit that I did not get in Amana to show you because I'm super excited about it. So this I showed in a previous video. It's from Horse and Buggy Country. Um, one of my, I think it was a viewer, contacted me and said, you really should go and look at her stuff. It looks just like, you, you know, what you like. And she was right. So I picked up this kit, and it came with all of the felt and the instructions, you know, how to do this. And when you see that stack of felt and you look at this, it's like, I don't know if I can do this. And as I was doing it, I'm like, oh, Jennifer, you have really messed this up. This is not going to look anything like this picture but I kept working on it. And this is how far I've gotten. Isn't he adorable? I am so happy with this. I was showing it to my son and he's like, he doesn't have any eyes. I'm like, I know, I gotta do all the embroidery, but I'm just so proud of myself that I got all the parts down and that it almost looks like what it's supposed to. So what I have left to do is the embellishment. So there's a holly leaf that I lost when I brought this down. Because I can do wool applique sitting on the couch watching TV, which is nice. I've got to do all of the embroidery stitching, which I'll probably get done this week. I'll put it on my schedule. But isn't that adorable? I took this up to show my mom, and she did the same thing. She's like, he doesn't have any eyes. I'm like, I haven't finished it. I just want you to be impressed that it looks like a Santa Claus. So that's one thing. And, and the other thing is that it's exactly the size of the picture. So 
so. So this is, again, horse and buggy country. If I can find a link, I will put it, oh, it's on there, horseandbuggycountry.com. But I'll try to remember to link that as well. Okay, and then the other thing that has taken up most of my time the past, I think I started this the week before Thanksgiving, is um, if you are on Instagram and you follow Michelle at the Striped Rose or Lori at Mischievous Stitches, you will notice that they've been doing crocheting quite a bit. And um, Michelle from Striped Rose is always showing crochet. She has some of the prettiest striped um, crocheted blankets I just absolutely love them and I finally just broke down and said I want to do one of these. So there are most of the ones that I like that um, Michelle shows are from Attic 24. This is a, um, a crocheter in the United Kingdom I believe and her stuff is beautiful and she has like the woodland crochet blanket, blanket meadows and hydrangea and all these just um, beautiful striped blankets so I was looking at it and I'm like okay and they have kits you can buy the kits and everything I'm like okay I'm just gonna see if I can substitute from Michaels so I went to Michaels and I bought yarn and the 15 skeins that they call for and I started crocheting this um, I'm doing the woodland blanket that's on her blog and I'm you know I was like oh this isn't too bad I'm not a big crocheter I, don't, I get lost in all those knots, and sometimes it's hard for me to see where I'm supposed to be, you know, inserting the hook and things like that. But I've powered through, and I've gotten through almost the entire blanket. But when I was doing this, I was showing it to my younger son, and he's like, oh, Brittany, his girlfriend, would love that. So this is her Christmas present. So I'll show you parts of it. So this is the bottom. I don't know if this is the back or the front, but this is the bottom and then it is huge it's supposed to fit a twin bed but that's supposed to look like woodland so you start at the ground and you work your way up the trees into the sky with those fall colors so isn't that beautiful I'm not the best crocheter but the pattern is pretty much right on target I do usually end the way it's supposed to end, but I have nine, no, I have three days left of stitching. I have seven rows left, and then I have to go around it three times. So again, I'm a planner. I give myself goals. So my plan was every day I would do three rows. And if I did every day do three rows, then I would finish it ahead of Christmas so that it can be wrapped and given to Brittany. So she hasn't seen it yet, though she knows it's going to be, isn't that pretty? So I'll have to make myself one later. Oh, it's so pretty. But she is a very sweet girl. They are a cute couple. Um, one of the things that I've always cooked that my younger son loves is black bean enchiladas. It's a vegetarian meal. I've made it since I was in graduate school. And he loves them. So when he was little, he would eat one enchilada. He just loved it. Now he can eat the entire pan. So we have to say, wait, let us each get one enchilada, and then you can have the rest. And he loves them. So he asked me about it the other day, because I haven't made them in a while. I haven't been able to find the green enchilada sauce. You know, everybody's about toilet paper. I'm all upset about the green enchilada sauce. So I told him that's why I haven't made it. Well, he went the other day to a grocery store and he found some. He's like, how many cans do you want me to buy? I'm like, all of it. We did and we only bought a few cans. So he brought it home and he helped me make a pan. They're easy. It's just onions, cook onions, add the black beans, a can of black beans and some cumin, mix that up, put it in some tortillas, add some cheese and then the green enchilada sauce and cook it. It's easy. I made it in graduate school when I had no time to cook. Um, but he wanted to know how to make it because he made black bean enchiladas for her, for Brittany this weekend. He sent me pictures, he did a good job. So, good job. Um, I keep getting off topic. So, so that's Brittany's. So, I was looking at this 
and I'm crocheting and I'm like, you know, I need something to keep my crochet hooks in, which I've made maybe, this is my third blanket I've made in my lifetime. I'm like, I need to get something. So I got on Amazon and I bought this. Isn't that cute? I am a cat person. I have collected Siamese cats and other cat figurines since I was probably six years old. My aunts and my grandmother always bought me little cats. I have one of those um, shadow box things. I forget what they call it, but it's got all the little spaces and they would always buy me little cats to put in there. But when I was first married, my plan was my kitchen was going to be all cats. I'll try to find cat plates and all this stuff. Really ridiculous. But when I saw this, I thought that is adorable. And it's really cool because it's perfect for your crochet hooks. See, that's how I don't have very many. But then you can keep all your other accoutrement in there as well. And they had the same pattern for a larger one to keep your knitting needles in, which I do. I have been knitting. I haven't knitted much this year, but I do have a blanket that I started um, probably a year ago, you know, October, that I wanna, I'm gonna work on. Once I finish this blanket for Brittany, I'm gonna work on that other knitted blanket. But then I was like, oh, I just love these blankets and I'm gonna give this one away. So I started looking and I actually ordered two of the kits from the company that Attic24 works with. And um, it was in the UK but by the time I bought those two kits plus shipping and they mailed it to me, it was cheaper than what I paid for this afghan buying the yarn at Michael's with buy one, get one half off. So that's crazy. So I have two afghans, the kits for two afghans that I will start once I finish the blanket that I'm knitting. I'm not going to allow myself to start that until I get that knitted project done. Okay, so now let's talk about my plans for the rest of December and the and January. So in December, my plan is to finish this uh, Jolly Happy Soul. If I finish that, then I'm going to start the um, another one of her Christmas projects. It will probably be the Holiday Hoopla Christmas because I think that one's really cute and it'll go really quickly. So that is part of my plans. I didn't show you one of my other whips. I started yesterday the December mini sampler from, from the heart, and that's my progress. And on these, I just do a little bit each day so that it takes a little bit longer. So like today, I'll do the bells, and then the next day, I'll do the word December, and then I'll do rows of, of letters each day. So it'll take me about a week to finish these. And again... I post the, my progress on Instagram and the hashtag monthly mini sampler sal if you're interested in following or participating in that. Also, in on the 15th, which is my 30th wedding anniversary, I will be starting the Country Cottage Needlework Sampler of the Month series. So this is January, and my plan is to start the prior month sampler on the 15th of each month so december 15th i'm starting january february i mean january 15th i'll start february and that way i can display these together with my other monthly series um, in a space that is not very well decorated in my house so i'll insert a picture here of that space and this is at my back door. It is never neat back there. It's always a disaster. My husband is kind of like Messy Marvin. I love him, but he does not know how to put things away. 30 years, I can say that. So the plan is to get that area cleaned up because right now the shelf is somewhat empty because I cleaned it out about a week ago. Um, and then the, the desk below is covered with mason jars and African violets and seeds, which I'm going to get that all organized and make that a place for my husband to plug in all of his uh, electronics. We were talking about that the other day because right now he plugs them in on my, my kitchen counters. So like one counter has like a phone, um, his AirPods, his what we call tiny game, the, the 
Nintendo Switch and all other types of equipment that he has. He's like, well, there's these plugins. I'm like, this is a kitchen counter. So we're going to move all that to that back desk area. But anyway, the shelves up top, I want to do monthly displays. So all these different monthly series that I've been stitching, I want to put them in on display in that area. So that's, that's my plan this year. We'll see how that works out. Um, in addition to those, I hope to finish the afghan that I am working on that I showed you earlier and also finish that other um, knitted blanket that I started a couple of years ago and I'll show that in a, in a future video. Other than that, I think I'm going to, I don't have time to do very much because I have to get my chapters done. I shouldn't even be recording this video. I should be working on my chapters, but I'm being rebellious. Um, so I really won't be able to do very much else other than what I have planned for the rest of December. However, in 2021, my plan is to stitch what I want, not worry about my whip numbers because I've gotten them down to about 35 and I'll do a whip parade towards the end of December to show you what those are. And then I'm going to focus on stitching some of the newer things or things that I've had in my stash for a while that I'm like, one day I'll stitch these. I'm going to stitch them. I'll be turning 50 in 2021. So I told my husband, I said, I have 50 more years to get all these projects done and I'm going to have fun doing them. So, because I plan to live to 100. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what my plans are for January. I actually went through and all of my charts and picked out different projects and I have them all kitted up per month. So I have 12 project bags over here. I'll show you my little box. I have 12 project bags. Don't you love my box? I've shown this before. Got it at Tuesday mornings years ago. And I've got them all organized by month and that's what my plans are each month. And they're not the same number. It's just like this looks like something I would stitch in February and I put it in that bag. These are not the only things I will stitch because if something new comes out that I like, I'm going to stitch it. Like this just came out, Winds of Autumn. I have them in my Etsy shop if you're interested. I have a few left. Um, I bought, I had the first shipment come in. I posted the picture on Instagram and they were gone. And so I ordered some more, got those in. So if you're interested, this is a fabulous booklet. It's got lots of great things in it. And I'm going to show you what my plans are to stitch. And I may start this this month. Isn't that adorable? It looks like a cake in a cake pan. And I actually have that, so I'm going to stitch that. Maybe I might start that on the 15th as well. Let's see what else is in here that I think is adorable. Everything. I'm loving drums. Okay, so those are some of the things that I want to start. In January, my plans are to start the January mini sampler. I'm going to start that on January 1st. And then I have, I was a part of several of these kit of the kit clubs and including this um, scattered seed sampler. So this is one of the kits that came out this year. Skeptical, skeptical gathering, gathering, yeah, gatherings. And I'm going to start that, and it's a full kit. So I'll start that in January. I'm also going to stitch this. I love this series by Beth Twist, Heartstring Samplery. And I want to display that on my shelf in February. So I'm going to, and I have this frame. So I'm going to stitch this. So cute. V is for Valentine. And that will not take very long, but it is adorable. And then on the 20th of January, I had I already picked this back in October when I made my decision that I'm going to stitch what I want when I want. And, um, but now there's a sow that's starting on the 20th and I'm going to join that and I'm going to stitch Oh Joyous Day, but I'm not going to stitch all of it. I'm just going to stitch the flowers because I want to make this into a drum. I think this would be absolutely beautiful to stitch this row of flowers. And if that's not long enough, then add, and I know I'm going to do it. I'm going to stitch this row, and then I'm going to stitch this row to make a drum. And then I'm going to either do the bird or the house on the top. Wouldn't that be a beautiful drum? 
Maybe I'll do that set of flowers. I don't know. So I'm going to pick one of these three to stitch to put on the top of that drum. That is so pretty. When I first saw this at market, I'm like, love these flowers. And they would be perfect as a drum. Okay, so that's my January plans. Let's see. That puts me right at 40 minutes. So I think I'm going to stop there. And I will show you in my first video of January, I'll show you my February plans. Okay, so future. You should expect from me by the end of December a video that shows you my whip. So I'll do a whip parade. And then I'll also do a video that shows you my finish parade. Not my FFO parade because I haven't had time to do very much FFOing. I've been in my craft room very little this year because I've been sitting in front of a computer answering questions all day, every day it feels like. But, um, so I'll do a finish parade. One of the things I'm going to do this next year is I'm going to do giveaways because, and I'll explain what these giveaways are based on. So when I order from certain um, designers, a lot of times they will just throw in a freebie and they are adorable and I think that those should go to my viewers. So I have several from different um, designers that I have ordered from over the past few years. And then another thing that happens is when I order charts from Hoffman, which that's where I get most of my charts for my Etsy shop, Jen Stitching Niche. And when they send them to us, they send those in a big box and they just stack all those charts in there together. Sometimes, not often, but sometimes charts get bent. And I know we all are very picky about these charts we're getting and it's bad enough that they're going through the mail and that they may not get to you in perfect condition, but realize that sometimes they don't get to your shops in perfect condition. So over the years, I have put any that are damaged in such a way that I think people will give me a hard time about to the side and I'm going to use those as giveaways. And when I say damaged, it's not horrible damage. Actually, when I was looking at these, I'm like, why are these put in here? And then I see what the issue is. So, like, my first giveaway is going to be Eleanor Rigby. And see, it's in really good condition. But if you look closely, there's a bend right here. And there's a bend right here. So, what happened is when they put these in the box, something bent them. And it affected all five copies that I ordered that time. Is it five copies or four copies? One, two, three, all four copies. So this giveaway is for a copy of Eleanor Rigby by Blackbird Design. If you are interested in entering this drawing, just put in Eleanor Rigby. Or let's not do that. That could be misspelled. So just say that I am interested in stitching the flower. Okay? and you will be in, in that drawing. Now realize that it has a little wrinkle here and it has a little wrinkle on the back. So it's not perfect, but it's practically perfect. Okay, so that's my first drawing. Also, when I ordered charts from Wendy from the heart, she sent me two copies of this, Joy to the World. So if you're interested in this one, just say, I would like to stitch Joy. And for my next video, so in two weeks, that's what I plan to do my next video, I will draw, draw for these. So there will be six winners. And just like everyone else for these drawings, please do not say anything about draw, you know, winning. I don't want to, you know, don't put anything about drawings, competition, anything that's going to alert, to some, you know, alert people to the fact that this is, that there's some type of drawing going on. Um, just make sure you put your name in the comments and I'll ship it to anywhere. And, um, I hope you enjoy those. So I have a stack of these things that I'll be giving away over the course of the next of the next year. So, all right. So I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday and end of 2020. I know it's been a tough year for many people, more so for some of us than others. I have had a rather calm 2020. I, you know, I'm going to look back on this from a different perspective than many people. I've enjoyed being at home. I love working from home. And I've told my boss that multiple times. Um, so I just have enjoyed being able to focus 
on family and home, which I have not done in many, many years, like I would like to. I also have been had the pleasure of working in my garden and working with my plants. And so I'm gonna insert a couple of pictures here of my um, succulents, which have gotten a little bit crazy. I brought them in because it got cold. So they're sitting right at my front door. And then also I picked up some poinsettias, which are beautiful. So I'll pick, uh, put some pictures in there. And I planted amaryllis and paper whites, which I've never done that before. And I'll post some pictures of those as well. Thank you for visiting with me. Happy New Year. And I hope to see you before the New Year, probably in about two weeks. Thanks.